by Hit Intros, Attack on Titan Season 2. We kick off the first episode with the face of a Titan being revealed inside of Wall Cena. Han Zoe is baffled, then Pedo Nick approaches her in a panic and begs her to not let the Titan inside the wall into the sunlight. The soldiers heed the warning and cover the face with sheets. Zoe starts looking for answers from Nick, but is ignored. She gets triggered and threatens to throw him off the wall. He makes it clear that he's prepared to die to keep his secrets. <laughs> She doesn't do it and claims it was a prank, bro. A messenger is writing to deliver a message to Command Edwin that there are Titans inside of Wall Rose. We then jump back 12 hours to some familiar faces in Connie Springer and Sasha Brauts. Reiner Braun and his loyal companion Bertolt Hoover are also on standby playing chess. Sasha hears footsteps. Mike Zakarius is in charge and spots Titans. He gives the order to the side characters to get their horses and warns surrounding homes and settlements. Since Connie and Sasha are from the area, they are charged with being guides for the rest of the soldiers. Connie agrees on the condition that he can go to his village first, which is to the south and where the Titans are coming from. The Titans start spreading out of nowhere, so Mike has to go and slow them down. Edwin wakes up and uncontested waifu is waiting for him with her trusty scarf. Ottoman comes in to deliver the news that Titans are inside of Walros. Mika comes into contact with the Beast Titan who can talk and control the nearby Titans. <laughs> The Beast Titan wants to know about the maneuver gear, but Mike is too scared to answer. So he takes the maneuver gear and the surrounding Titans kill Mike. Episode 2. The side characters were told they were on standby, but were actually isolated in case there were more Titans like Edit. Ottomine has a theory that the walls are made of Titan skin, similar to how Annie encased herself in her shell. The Recon Corps are preparing to go aid the soldiers inside Wall Rose and find the breach in the wall. They bring Pedo Nick along in hopes that the sight of actual suffering from the Titans will be enough to convince him to share what he knows. Sasha guides the soldiers to nearby villages to warn them. She then proceeds alone to the village where she used to live, deep in the forest. We get a short flashback of her and her dad discussing what to do in the future. Sasha is being selfish about the refugees from Wall Maria, but he convinces her that they are all connected so she should care more. Back to the present, she comes across the new village. She finds a little girl whose mom is being eaten by a titan. Sasha tries killing the titan but can't break through its skin. So instead she has to make like Pedo Nick and escape with the little girl. She sends the girl to safety and blinds the titan with arrows to slow it down. When she goes to find the little girl, she comes across her dad who is bringing horses to people. Connie makes it back to his hometown and everything's destroyed. When he goes back to his house, there's a Titan just kind of chilling on top of it. The Titan's legs aren't strong enough to carry it, so it's stuck there, but the question is how did it get there if it can't move? Episode 3. While investigating Connie's hometown, they don't find any people or blood. They come to the conclusion that they must have escaped before the Titans got there. But it's unlikely because the houses were still destroyed and all the horses were in the stables. As they're preparing to leave, the crippled Titan tells Connie, welcome home. <laughs> Yud Miet is never away from Krista and are riding with the Western team who evacuated people. So now they're going to ride along the wall to find the breach. Hot Rico makes her reappearance as well as Beta Hans. The Southern team with Connie are following the wall through the night and end up running into the Western team. Neither side were able to find a breach in the wall even though they came from opposite directions. They need somewhere to rest so they head to some castle ruins for shelter. Zoe had been studying a piece of the female Titan's hard skin that didn't evaporate. When she compared it with the pieces of the wall, she found that they were near identical. So their plan is to use Eden's Titan to harden its skin and seal the opening in the wall. Pedo Nick gets a taste of the suffering spreading through the land. When pressed to talk again, he still doesn't say anything, but he does say that they were assigned to monitor Krista. Reiner had discovered something about Ymir. But before he can say anything, the castle ruins start getting overran by titans. They see the beast titan off in the distance heading for the wall. The soldiers prepare to engage the titans, but the side characters have to just watch because they aren't equipped to fight. So he leads a group of soldiers along with Mikasa, Adamine, and Eden to the abandoned castle so they can assess the wall. Episode 4 the Beast Titan climbs the wall and is watching Titans assault the castle ruins. Before the fighting starts, we jump back two hours. Connie is talking about how the Titan laying on his house reminded him of his mom. Ymir jokes with him to help him stop thinking about it. Reiner later runs into Ymir who is scavenging for food and comes across some herring. She comments on how she doesn't like herring, but when Reiner looks at the can, he realizes that the label is in another language. <laughs> Now we are caught up to the present and the scouts engage the titans. The door gets smashed so side characters have to go find a way to keep the titans out. Reiner and Bertolt hold off the titan until they kill it with a cannon.
Connie put no points into perception, so Rainer has to push him to safety. He gets bitten by time, but carries it to a window so they can all push it out. Rainer's arm is broken, but he gets a pretty nice consolation prize. The four scouts are putting in work when a boulder lands on the horses and kills them all. Two of the scouts go back to check on the new recruits and they get hit by another boulder and die instantly. The Beast Titan is hurling boulders toward them in another large wave of Titans attack. Having seen enough, the Beast Titan decides to leave. The last two soldiers are killed, leaving just the side characters left alive. They seem to be out of options, so Ymir takes a knife that Connie had and uses it to transform into a Titan to protect everybody. <laughs> Episode 5. We jump back a ways to where everybody was in training. They were doing winter training and everybody makes it back fine, but Chris and Ymir were with Daz and all three are missing. Eren and the others are ordered to leave them and the rescue teams will be sent out in the morning. Daz was injured, so Chris is pulling him through the snow. Ymir is trying to explain that they will all die if she doesn't leave him behind. Ymir comes to the conclusion that Krista isn't actually trying to save Daz. Krista is actually trying to commit suicide, but looked like a hero while doing it. Ymir confronts her about being a noble's daughter who is going to be killed unless she took on a new name and joined the Cadet Corps. Ymir had overheard Priest talking about the situation and later joined the Cadet Corps and ended up finding her. Ymir tries convincing her not to give up her name and live life to the fullest. Krista still doesn't want to leave Daz behind though, so Ymir suggests throwing him off a cliff near the camp in hopes that he'll survive the fall. She isn't convinced, so Ymir throws her down a hill and she gets covered by snow. This allows Ymir to transform into a titan without being seen and carry Daz to the camp. Jump back to the present and we found that Ymir had rolled the ugliest titan in existence, but she doesn't let this stop her and she starts popping off on all the other titans. Ratner and Bertolt recognize Ymir's titan because she had killed somebody close to them in the past. Ymir tears down the tower so to land on all the titans, but it exposes everybody's safety. This kind of ends up back firing because it's not enough to keep the Titans down and Ymir ends up getting swarmed. Zoe and the others show up and help fight off the Titans while Eden gets his first kill outside of his Titan form. <laughs> Ymir is badly injured and Krisa ends up revealing her name is actually Historia. Episode 6. Ymir has lost a leg, arm, and is in a coma, but she's still alive thanks to her Titan attributes. Krisa's full name is Historia Reis and is connected to a well-known noble family. Rainer is pretty demoralized after his injury and Bertolt starts saying that they should just return to their hometown. Hans shows up after searching along the wall all night and reporting that there isn't any breaches. They all prepare to head back to Trost District when Rainer pulls out in the side and starts saying that him and Bertolt are actually the colossal and armored titan. They explain that their goal was to wipe out all of humanity, but that can be prevented if Eden agrees to go with them to their hometown. Eden feigns ignorance, but just 12 hours earlier Zoe had received information about Annie Lee and her, or the female titan. Both Rainer and Bertolt had come from the same area as her, which is suspicious suspicious, but not enough to convince anybody that they were actually working together. However, more things started to add up, like when the female titan attacked the expedition, she attacked from the right wing. Rainer and Bertolt were among those who were told that he was in the right wing, which was false information designed to lure out titans and spies. Armin then talked about when him and Rainer fought the female titan on the expedition. Rainer broke free from the titan's grasp, but afterward she appeared to be looking at her palm, possibly reading a message from him after he learned the real position of Eden. Everybody is ordered to act naturally until they can get the both of them underground. Back to the present and Eden declines the offer to go with them. In response to this, Rainer reveals his broken arm healing. Costa's like, nope, and attacks both of them, which probably only ended up helping proc their transformations. Episode 7. We come in with the fight between Eden and Reiner. Meanwhile, Berto grabs Ymir along with somebody else and eats them. Zoe and the other soldiers engage the Colossal Titan. Like before, nobody can get close to Strike the Vital because he releases steam that burns anybody nearby. Eden's struggling because his strikes aren't effective against Reiner's armor. He thinks back on his training with Annie and her talking about fighting stronger opponents. With this in mind, he avoids a head-on fight and takes Reiner to the ground instead. Somewhere along the line, he learns some jujitsu and starts putting the moves on him like a young Gracie. He puts Reiner through a series of submissions and ends up ripping off one of Reiner's arms. Zoe talks about how on old armor, a spot behind the knees were weak and to target that. To get some of the side characters involved when Adam puts him in a headlock, Mikasa comes in and slices the back of his knee. Reiner realizes he's in a bad spot and Eden is getting close to ripping off his head, so he pushes them to a strategic place under the Colossal Titan and releases a yell. The yell is a signal to the Colossal Titan to fall on top of them, and in the last scene, the Colossal Titan is breaking apart and starting to fall. Episode 8. After the Colossal Titan falls on top of them, Reiner gets the upper hand. He bites Eden out of his Titan, and Bertolt still had Ymir, so he escapes with Reiner. We go to Trost District, where Pixies is turning up in the middle of the day and talks with Edwin about the current situation. Most of the episode is pretty filler-esque, with a flashback of the three of them as kids getting into fights. After that, we go back to the wall and Mikasa regains consciousness and she finds out that Eden was taken five hours ago. And no one is pursuing them because they need a lift to get the horses over the wall. Beta Han says he's going with them and he gets them motivated to go get Eden. Which cues one of those terrible scenes where they show each character nodding one at a time. Mm. Mm. 
Hmm, yeah, we get it. You want Edwin back. We get it. But I digress. Commander Edwin brings lifts for the horses, and while they're moving them, Zoe explains that they might have stopped at the giant forest. They'll need time to rest after the fight, and the treats will keep them safe from the Titans. Edwin wakes up with the other three, but has no arms. The last scene are the soldiers moving out to try and reach the forest before nightfall. Episode 9. Zoe stays behind because she was injured while fighting the Colossal Titan. She wants to ride to Connie's village to investigate the Titan that can't move. She can't ride because of the injury, so soldiers offer to go for her. Over to Edwin and the others who are resting in trees and can't go anywhere because they are surrounded by Titans. We find out that Ymir knew she was a Titan, but she actually doesn't know that much about it. Out of nowhere, Reiner starts talking like he's a normal soldier and doesn't know he's a Titan. Everyone is confused except for Bertolt and he has to remind him that they're both Titans. We get a short flashback of him, Annie, and Bertolt as Marco is being killed during the Boulder mission in Trask. <laughs> Marco was John's friend and Annie had his maneuver gear which Admin had noticed and led to her being found out as the female Titan in season 1. But the theory with Reiner is that he loses sight of what's real after pretending to be a soldier for so long. When Eden asked Bertolt how he felt when he heard the story about Eden's mom, he said that he did feel sorry. So even though they're Titans, I guess compassion isn't completely lost with them. Ymir ends up asking about the Beast Titan, and even though they're clearly familiar with him, they don't reveal anything. Her guess is that they're trying to get to him because he's their way home. When Eden asks who the enemy is, Ymir is cut off before she can say anything. Reiner's trying to convince her to join them in exchange for Krisa's well-being. Since Ymir only seems to care about Krisa, she agrees and doesn't give any information to Eden. They see smoke signals from the incoming soldiers and just have to wait another hour before the sun sets so the Titans can't move and they can escape. Episode 10. The soldiers that went to Connie's village on Zoe's behalf discover a close resemblance between Connie's mom and the disabled Titan. While discussing what to do next, we find out that Bertolt has a thing for Annie. And I ship it, but I hope he's ready for the rough Titan sex because she seems like the type. When they're getting ready to leave, Eden tries to fight back, but without being able to transform, he's choked out. Which could also be a thing for Annie, so I'm predicting a love triangle in the future. Before he passes out, he overhears Ymir talking about when she was a Titan and how she wandered outside the walls for over 60 years. Ymir soon realizes that Krista probably came with the formation to save them and she wants to go back to take her with them. Renner doesn't want to and Ymir has flashbacks of her childhood. She was homeless and taken in by some cult that claims she inherits the blood of the king which is a fabrication to increase the influence over the followers. The people end up worshipping her, and it's a nice change, so she just goes along with it. But when they get raided by soldiers, everybody kind of throws her under the bus and blames her for the whole thing. Even though it wasn't her fault, she takes the blame to protect the people. As punishment, they take her and the people in the cult up on a wall. It's not revealed how, but they do something that changes them into titans. They then kick her off a wall, and she aimlessly wanders around for 60 years. This is when she runs into Reiner and kills his companion. She then turns back into a human and returns to civilization, and that's when she hears about Krista. So she enters the cadet corps to find her. You meet threatens them, saying that she's going to take Eden if they don't go back for Krista. They finally agree, so when the soldiers arrive, she abducts her. <laughs> then they use the armor titan to escape with everybody else pursuing close behind. Episode 11. We come back in on the pursuit, and Ymir goes to get Krista out of her mouth. With so much alive going around, you'd think it's a hentai. But not one of the good ones, one of the bad ones that you watch for like five minutes, and you're like, whoa, and you have to leave. Well, this isn't awkward. Ymir comes out of her time to talk and explains that she's following Reiner now. Throughout the show, it seemed like Ymir wanted to be with Krisa because they had things in common and she liked her, but in reality, it was just to save herself. She explains that she stole the power of the Titans from Reiner's friend when she killed him, and now they're going to kill her to get it back. But on the other hand, if she hands over Krista, then maybe they'll be more forgiving. All along, she was using Krista as insurance to secure her own safety. Krista's like, cool story, bro, but we cool, and is willing to go with them to keep her safe. Adam wakes up to Beta Hans being more of a disappointment than usual. Mikasa tries to get to Eden, but Reiner protects him with his hands, procking Mikasa's fabled crazy eyes. Since she can't get to Eden, she targets Ymir, but is stopped by Krista. Ymir is talked down because if she fights back, she's probably gonna die. With her not fighting, they can focus on getting Eden back. We get a nice reunion between the characters. The side characters reminisce and ask if everything they shared was just lies. But it doesn't seem like they're doing this by choice. Even though they deceived everyone, it still seems like they care about them. Edwin somehow got in front of them, and is luring a huge pack of Titans toward them, which stopped the armored Titan. The soldiers are ordered to retrieve Eden, and while doing this, Edwin gets bitten by a titan and loses his arm. While trying to get to Eden, Mikasa is also injured by a titan, but John saves her. Ademain arrives and starts getting in their head, saying how can you leave Annie behind, and makes up this story about her being tortured. Bertolt loses it right before he's stabbed by one-armed Edwin. Mikasa then retrieves Eden while Connie and Sasha get Krista. Krista wants to go back for Ymir, but they won't let her. Reiner starts throwing Titans to slow them down and stop the horses. Eden and Mikasa are knocked off, and then we get the second reunion of the episode with the Titan that killed Eden's mom. 
the episode 12. Eren is tied up, so when the Titan tries to kill him and Mikasa, Hans has to save them. Krista goes back to Ymir, and they both agree to live for themselves and fight together. Mikasa cuts Eren free, but he can't transform to help Hans because he hasn't fully recovered yet. Hans tries to hold his own, but ends up getting eaten. Once a beta, always a beta. Mikasa's waifu trades Spike. Eren, realizing he needs to encourage further waifu behavior, stands up to the Titan. But when he does this, something happens and all the nearby Titans attack the Titan who killed Hans. Apparently, Eden has something called the Coordinator, which allows him to control nearby Titans. This is why Reiner wanted to abduct him so badly. Eden yells at Reiner that he's going to kill him, which triggers the Titans to attack Reiner. With the Titans distracted, the soldiers are ordered to retreat. Yumiad ends up staying behind, though, to help Reiner fight. All three make it out alive and get to safety on top of Wall Maria. Connie and Zoe report that it's likely there was no breach in the wall, and that the Titans were actually people from Connie's village. So all the Titans are assumed to be people. It's a bittersweet fact that gets him one step closer to the truth. Bike, I didn't really- oh, come on, dude. Ends up getting- Well, <laughs> him and Mikasa, they- Now they'll both fight together. Mikasa- oh. And Mikasa- One line. One line in. I couldn't get one line in. Awesome. Awesome. Having fun. Having fun. I love doing this. This is really fun. Themselves and fight together. Oh, man. Control nearby zombies. <laughs> All three make it out alive and get on. Mikasa's turn. Mm. Them as a souvenir so that they could get. <laughs> the nearby Titans attack the Titan. Oh, come on. Actually, people from Connie's village. Eren is tied up, so when the Titan tries to kill him and Mikasa, Hans has to save them. Krista goes back to Ymir, and they both agree to live for themselves and fight together. Mikasa cuts Eden free, but he can't transform to help Hans because he hasn't fully recovered yet. Hans tries to hold his own, but ends up getting eaten. Once a beta, always a beta. Mikasa's waifu trades Spike. Eden, realizing he needs to encourage further waifu behavior, stands up to the Titan. But when he does this, something happens, and all the nearby Titans attack the Titan who killed Hans. Apparently, Eden has something called the Coordinator, which allows him to control nearby Titans. This is why Reiner wanted to abduct him so badly. Eden yells at Reiner that he's going to kill him, which triggers the Titans to attack Reiner. With the Titans distracted, the soldiers are ordered to retreat. Yumiad ends up staying behind, though, to help Reiner fight. All three make it out alive and get to safety on top of Wall Maria. Connie and Zoe report that it's likely there was no breach in the wall and that the Titans were actually people from Connie's village, so all the Titans are assumed to be people. It's a bittersweet fact that gets him one step closer to the truth. Oh.